Hello from the Flanagan Homestead. Last year I poured these retaining walls on this steep slope that was real close to the house up there and I always come down these steps and go to the goat and chicken barn and this slope was always way too steep to do anything useful with and it just grew weeds for forever and I poured these retaining walls which turned into raised garden beds basically and uh, last year we we're using them all but I do have one section left to pour so today I'm going to pour that section and I'm going to show you how I did it and why I'm doing the things that I do. Before I get going on the pour I want you to see that these walls are just depending on where they are uh, just below belt high I put bricks for a walkway on this side so that I can lean over and just weed the garden right here. It's a beautiful thing. So if I come over here to where we've just got some of this year's vegetable garden started, a little bit of onion there, so you can see I'm leaning up right here, weeding right here without bending over. So that's the section I'm pouring today. The reason I didn't pour it earlier is that from the goat barn I've been dumping all the chicken manure and waste and composting it and this opening allowed me to run the tiller up and till it and keep mixing it. And then here's the level I was just on with cucumbers growing and then you can see spinach, romaine, cilantro is just getting started here. The blueberries are on the gradual slope and then we've got another retaining wall where we've stuck in some raspberries. We're going to move those someday and use that for more vegetables. Strawberry patches, more strawberries because we love berries, and then more vegetable garden down here. And they're all watered. And a high-rise sprinkler. So the post has been anchored in since last year, but because I've been composting in here, I've got all kinds of soil coming back in here. I need to remove this first before I start my project. Before the form boards are put on, I'm going to pound some galvanized nails in while I have easy access and I'm going to leave them sticking out an inch or an inch and a half. It's important to use galvanized nails so they won't uh, rust with the concrete, but by sticking these nails in with a nice broad head, it'll give something for the concrete, something more for the concrete to adhere to and keep the concrete and the post tight together. Hope you can hear me well. My neighbor's doing a good job weed whacking over there. Uh, I need to get a microphone. Anything, anyway, another thing that I like to do, uh, I need, for this height, I just want one piece of rebar that's gonna go all the way from one post to the next. Uh, I'm gonna drill a hole into these posts about an inch and a half deep, put it in there, and then if for any reason that the concrete wants to crack, it won't separate because it has the rebar in there holding it together. So one piece, and the for a wall like this, a, a small inch, quarter inch, three eighths inch rebar. Uh, this is smaller than three eighths, uh, but a small piece of rebar should be plenty. To if the wall cracks, it won't separate. Usually, to cut the rebar, you could just use a sawzall blade. Uh, you don't have to cut all the way through. If you have bolt cutters, that works too. I've got that end where the length I want it in, so I'm going to measure in an inch and a half here. This is where I want to cut it here and I'll try to put a notch in it and then it should snap off, hopefully. It doesn't always work that easily. I'm gonna slide this off the edge of the post. Okay, we're not all the way through, but once you get far enough, it'll snap right off. And I've got my rebar that's gonna go in the post. Okay, I'm gonna start building the forms from the backside. I'm gonna put plywood on the backside because I don't care about getting the old, old world look on it. Uh, it could be a smooth face and I could just build it. I'm gonna line up the top first and then just cover up underneath whatever I want. It's not the easiest way to do it, but then we have the line across the top. You may notice a groove in that plywood and that groove is so that when the form board is right here, we could slide rebar in through it and hook the rebar onto this rebar and then we'll dig a deep hole back here and run this down into the ground and then we'll pour concrete onto that. And so that is an anchor or a deadhead way back in there so, and it's way down there deep. So when there's a lot of pressure pushing up against the top of the wall, um, it's not gonna pull because 
it's hooked onto this uh, rebar that's going across supporting the entire wall and once a uh, retaining wall starts to tip you're not getting it back up so we anchor this really deep and it will not pull now this particular wall because it's so short and this and the weight of the wall and the, how deep it's poured in there i'm not going to put this extra anchor in here but these other walls i definitely did that um, uh, there's multiple on each of these walls and so they will not start to tip uh, the other thing is i don't know if i talked about that this earlier but the top of this wall is higher than the bottom of the next wall. So as we fill this in, there will be dirt up against the backside of the other wall when we finish it. You cannot lay it out and have this wall be a retaining wall and then slope down to the top of the next one. You got to build up so that the front wall, the lower wall is higher than the bottom of the next wall up. I need to sink this this point. Good enough. Now for the other side. Now before I stick the rebar in, I like to spray a little flex seal in the hole and on the bar. Now I used the last time I used this flex seal was last summer. Hopefully I can get a decent spray. Then I'll Get that in the hole, get on the end of the rebar. Now this is where it gets slightly more difficult, it shouldn't be too bad. Get the flex seal in there, and then we've got to bow this out so that it bends and get back in there and then push it back in. There we go, the rebar is ready to be poured around. Next, we're going to put the spacer on. Uh, the reason we have this, just combining the look that we wanted and the width that we wanted for strength, uh, we decided that we want these size posts in between, and then this angles out to the five inch thickness that we want. Um, I have a bunch of screws that I've been using over and over again. I prefer screws as opposed to uh, forming nails because they just go flush and then you can pull them out and use them over and over again easily. I like to set this back a little bit so that concrete will slip in here and there'll be just a little bit of concrete inside this edge. So when the weight of the dirt pushes against the wall, besides just having the nails holding it there, there'll be a lip of concrete that will uh, keep the concrete from wanting to separate from the post. I'm having trouble getting this board to come up, so take a shovel, stick the point in underneath it, step on the shovel, that brings the board up. Voila, put your screw in. That's what you gotta do all the time when you're working by yourself. To make sure that uh, Concrete mud doesn't flow out through the cracks, the few small cracks at the bottom. This is, that will be not a difficult task at all to stop. This is a sloped up hill. I'll just kick a little bit of mud down behind here and that'll keep mud from going up underneath this way. All right, I went in to find a straighter two by four and found it and I need a little help. It'll go more than twice as fast. Hot Mama was up working. She said she's going to come down and hold the other end of the board. This is going to make things a lot easier building the form having a second person. So she'll just be holding the other end. This board is flat going across this way. It does bow in and out a little bit. So I'll put the bow in so that the weight of the concrete will want to push it back out. So is there enough over there that we can... Look. 
And finishing up the form work, I pounded this post in the ground, in the ground so it won't kick out, and screwed it together on top so that it won't separate. And uh, there's no reason for this hanging off. I just hung the extra off the edge on the side I'm not working, cut it off on this side where I will be working. If you don't do this, it bows out. You can see on the form that I did before, the first one, it kind of bowed out in the middle because I did not squeeze it back together. I've done enough concrete work to know that that was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be quite that much. Kind of gives a cool look, but then you have to mix a lot more concrete. So instead, we're going to keep these forms pinned together. Here's another wall that did not have forms squeezing it together and got significantly wider. We're about to start mixing the concrete on the other side of the shop. We'll wheelbarrow it out here and dump it in. So here's one of the challenges of living on such a steep slope. I had to do some fancy driving to get my trailer off the side of the hill and by the woodshed. And from there, I've got my pipe. I've got 60 feet of drain pipe that I've connected and it runs down the hill there. And anyway, I shovel into the pipe up here I have a backing board that is through so the stuff that misses hits that and falls back in the trailer and the rest of that shoots out a 60 feet of pipe down by there by the shop where you can see it. From there I use it for mixing concrete or gravel paths or whatever else I need down there since I can't drive down there. Here's the pipe up there. Coming down, hot mama's up top. My wife struggling right now, she's been helping me. Here's the pile we got coming down here. Okay, I have two bags of Portland cement right here. Uh, it is not a premix, this is just the cement. Typically, you do three, uh, three parts gravel, two parts sand, and one part cement mix. But because I'm using the 5 8 minus that is, has a lot of fines in it that are basically sand. I am going to just do uh, five of the gravel and then one of the sand or of the cement and then basically I'm going to do that three times in the big mixer that I have here I can go 15 and 3 and that should be enough. Um, I'm going to put it in this tub here. These tubs are great especially when I'm doing a lot of projects in the summer. I just put all the cement in here. I can easily scoop out of it and then when I'm waiting for the next project whatever's left is can wait there. Uh, you will never use this tub for anything else again when you do that. You should have some kind of a cloth over your face when you're uh, pouring this out. This uh, cement, uh, I can't find mine right now. I'm going to hold my breath. I would encourage you, when you pour this in, there's going to be a lot of lime and other uh, things coming up out of this. You don't want to be breathing a whole lot of that. I do have my cloth mask that I'll be putting on soon, but right now I'm just going to break this open, pour it in. I'll be holding my breath. Uh, while I'm doing it, I don't want to be breathing too much of this in. These 94 pound bags are not light. Okay, a drier concrete mix is a stronger concrete mix is what we'd like. But at the same point in time, to get this to fill down in all the holes in the form and whatnot, and give us the look we want for, it's nice to have a little bit wetter to put in there. So I'm going to make this probably a little wetter than I should. 
Relax, Dad. It'll all work out. It'll be strong enough in the end. Now before I take off and go pour this, because I'm doing it myself, it's going to take a while. I'm going to put more water in here, not as much as I'll need for the whole mix, but there'll be a lot of water in here, and I'm going to throw a little bit of gravel in here, and that'll keep stirring around and keeping the stuff from drying to the paddle. It'll just keep everything, keep the inside of the drum clean. Okay, unfortunately I don't have a flat spot right up here so I can't bring the wheelbarrow right to this spot. Uh, the best way to get it in, if you're close, maybe shovels, but buckets can hold a larger amount and you have better control. I'm going to put this all the way along the bottom and tamp it down so any of the gaps and whatnot that it needs to fill in, that'll actually start to harden in that while I'm doing the next mix. And uh, it won't tend to squish out as much because I'm already doing that on this first load. Now I'm just going to make sure it's all tamped down there good. It'll start, believe it or not, harden just a little bit before I get back with my next load. Nothing else should squish out underneath the pouring boards after this. There is a little bit coming out in the small gaps in the bottom. Every load you do, Tapping the sides of the forms later. Normally when I'm doing this I have more of a crew. I'll have someone there's nothing up here yet. I'm, I've done three wheelbarrow or three mixer loads. I'm about halfway up and that's when I'll start pounding this and that'll create if you're pounding on this with a hammer, it'll vibrate the cream out to the outside, some of the rock in, and you'll get a smoother look. It's not as critical to do it out here just yet, but the corners, I definitely need to start working the corners because these corners never want to fill in. I've been tamping them down and I need to, on the way up, definitely pound the corners, pound the corners, pound the corners. And it won't hurt to do a little bit everywhere. I wish I had a vibrator, a concrete vibrator specifically, to uh, work this whole thing. Five loads in, we're getting really close to the top. Uh, we'll, we'll, next mix will be the last one. I've been uh, tamping this down front and back. Uh, i got to tap the sides again. You might be asking, how come you haven't seen me tapping on the back side? Uh, tapping, I've tamped it down, the whole thing, so that it's nice and solid and settled in, and the whole thing is structurally going to be solid. I don't care how nice the finish is on the back side, because the dirt's going to be up to it. Now when I get to the last board, I put a 2x4 on the top, besides just the plywood, I will be tamping that, because the dirt may not cover that part, but I need to... Continue to vibrate, tap the entire face of this on the front side and the top board on the back side. Especially the corners. It's 
So I'm gonna tamp this back in. In case you're wondering, those six uh, loads from way over by the shop to here took a little over an hour and that's with uh, taking the gloves off, turning the camera on, messing around with the camera and that sort of thing. But uh, about an hour's worth, little, uh, two bags of Portland cement and a little, about half a yard of gravel. You saw me unload two yards of gravel at the start of the video. That was uh, just because we always just pick up extra because we're going to have another project or we need a pathway or a driveway. Uh, so when I have the dump trailer on, just pick up more. All right, I've vibrated the heck out of this thing with the hammer. And now I got to push some of this mud back up to the top. Since we're on a slope, it all wanted to run down. But it's pretty solid now. I obviously don't have to use a screed board because this form is so uh, narrow. I'm just going to use my trowel and work off the extra mud. It's hard to get a mag float in here and really press it down in to pull the cream up the way it's made, but even on these small jobs, the mag float makes a difference. So I can just kind of, kind of work it back and pull it full direction. Okay, we're way too wet uh, to finish this, and uh, but I'm going to use the corner tool to round the corners because when you're using this as a retaining wall and you're leaning up against it, you don't want a sharp edge. I'm going to do this while it's still really wet just to make sure that there's no rocks pushed out on the outside edge that'll be hard to work in later. I'm going to have to, I'm going to just do a rough edge, it's still going to be really sloppy. I'm going to go clean up my other tools that I have, my wheelbarrow, my mixer and everything, get everything clean. I'm going to go eat some dinner and then as this firms up I'm going to come back and uh, do some finish work on it. All I'm really doing here, again, is getting those rocks off the edge that I'm going to have to work out later. It's a lot easier to do it, get them pushed in a little bit and have just cream on the edges later. That's nowhere near done, finished, but this is a good place to leave it. For about 45 minutes till I come back and finish it up. Okay, it's just after eight o'clock. I finished working on this, not finished working on it, but did the rough finish. At 7.20, I cleaned up my tools. I went and got uh, some dinner. So it's 40 minutes later. Uh, normally on a warmer sunny day, it would definitely be ready for finish. I think it's slightly still a little bit wet right now, but it's uh, you know, it's been in the mid to low 50s, a little bit of sprinkling today, cool, and I had a wet mix. So it may need a little bit of more time to set up actually, but I'm going to go ahead and try to work it because I want to get done and be done with this for the day. And so let's see how this turns out.
it really wasn't too bad, it wasn't too wet. Uh, I did, it turned out pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to put a broom finish on it. I'm gonna use this broom. This is not the normal type of broom they are talking about when they talk about broom finish, but it's just in the uh, pump house here, or the goat barn here. I can just drag this across the top here. I'm probably gonna put something over this to try to keep it dry because it's trying to sprinkle right now. And uh, not that it, the finish has to be spectacular on this, but I don't want rain on this for the next couple hours at least. Basically no pressure and drag this in a straight line. Okay, it's been three days, so I'm gonna start taking off the forms. Uh, when I was in construction, typically when we were doing uh, foundation walls and other walls that needed strength, typically we didn't wanna start building until after three days, and it had, a, you know, I believe it was like over 90% of its strength. Uh, concrete continues to harden for quite a, uh, significantly up to like 28 days. At 28 days, it's really strong, and but it will continue to harden for years to come, but, uh, Three days and 28 days are two significant points of time where at 28 days you're not really expecting much more strength to be added but uh, three days strong enough to start doing things so let's take off the boards and see what we got Okay, it's looking good. It looks like we vibrated in the corners really nicely, so there's not uh, gaps here. Some of the mud that was between the boards, while it's still reasonably soft, I'm gonna use a scraper and scrape this down a little bit flatter, so we won't have the rough edges. I'm gonna scrape this off that's on the post, and it'll look good. You can see behind me that it's a lot lighter colored where it's been dry for a year, but uh, in a month or so this will look the same color as that and we'll have a finished beautiful garden retaining wall Okay, the wall is done. Now we gotta figure out how to fill this back in. First of all, you should have something to help drain. Now we slope down this direction so I can put a drain pipe in here and some drain rock on top that gets in there and it'll flow out uh, that side of the garden. Uh, or you could do it like I did. Uh, it's too late to build the wall that way, but when I did the retaining wall with cinder blocks up above my sport court, I did a solid wall and then the bottom bricks, I didn't mortar in between. so. There's drain rock there and then there's gaps and on really rainy days, the water would run down the inside of the wall, but then it has the gaps and it would just come out the bottom of the wall because we left space for it to come out. So we don't get a lot of water stuck behind the wall. You get a lot of water in certain kinds of soils, it can get real soft and want to slide forward and push your wall down. So you don't want that. So uh, evaluate you, what kind of soil you'll have, how much water you're gonna have on it and make sure that you can drain it out. And the other thing is now I gotta fill this full of soil. I wanna have a garden here. I've seen a lot of people just get tons of nice topsoil and fill it up and they're wasting it because we're two feet deep down here on the bottom and there's no plants in my vegetable garden that are gonna be sending their roots two feet deep or need that. So uh, on some of the level, higher levels, I just used the clay that was up above and filled in the lower spots, then put better soil. Uh, Often on these, I actually use the permaculture thought process and threw some old logs in the bottom. It filled up space. Uh, in the permaculture, people will tell you that the logs will absorb water and then give it back. It'll also warm up sooner so you can pl start planting sooner in the year as opposed to waiting. It's a little bit warmer. And there's, there's no reason not to throw an old, an old log in here and let it rot uh, as it decays. Uh, you know the ground may sink a little bit so you put a little bit more topsoil on the top no big deal and it just is giving off nutrients so that's a good solid way to do it just uh, 
I had actually I didn't have logs I had chunks of firewood that didn't fit well or whatnot and I just and I couldn't split or something and just threw chunks of firewood in here and then th started throwing soil on top so it'll all work it'll make a beautiful garden just make sure that top foot or so you have good soil up here on top all right so it's just time for me to clean up my four boards clean up my mess put some soil in there and plant the gardens and thanks for joining me here on the Flanagan homestead where Christmas trees are my business teaching including horticulture is my job and outdoor projects like this are really my passion and since it is June here in the state of Washington it's time to enjoy some of my strawberries that I planted last year please consider liking subscribing and sharing I'm not sharing these strawberries though. <laughs>